Good morning, I'm here from AAA. Anybody here from? Good morning. Hi. <laughs> We're, we just usually start at 10, so we give, you know. You got it, I just wanted to make sure. Yep, I just wanted to make sure I got in on time that everything was working. <laughs> Good morning, Ms. Karen. Hi. <laughs> All right, I'm going to remute myself and Morning, everyone. Good morning. How's everybody doing on this Friday? Well, how about yourself? Good. Excited for hey. another fun Friday. <laughs> how are the students excited that it's Friday, guys? You want to write in the chat and write what you're going to be doing this weekend. Anybody doing anything fun? A lot of people are excited. <laughs> <laughs> yes, good morning, everyone. Hi, Miss Kate. Hi. <laughs> I heard that we had an awesome fun Friday last week. Well, actually I saw it, so I know we did. Yes, we're so fortunate to have all these wonderful opportunities. Yes. <laughs> Ooh, someone's gonna watch a movie and eat pizza. That sounds like my kind of weekend. <laughs> Ooh, Peter the Rabbit 2 is coming out. Somebody's going swimming. Somebody's celebrating their mom's birthday. Wow, all these fun, exciting things they're doing this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> Someone's going to a new house. That sounds exciting. Ooh, we have a lot of mom's birthdays. Big weekend for birthdays. PS4 is in the house. Somebody's going to a wedding. A lot of Peter Rabbit. PS41, MS4, 26.
PS5, PS6. Paw Patrol, that's not, that's that's a good show for his sister's birthday. A lot of birthdays, Miss Kate. I know, that's so <laughs> nice. <laughs> Lot Even of I was excited. Relax. That St. Bernard dog is so cute that you keep popping, that keeps popping up. He has 39. It's cooler out today, right, everyone? Is it cooler in your classrooms today? It's been so hot lately. Yeah. Well, someone's asking, what is Mia? Mia is the St. Bernard that does story times with the Pavonia branch. And sometimes she goes to Hamilton Park so you can meet her in real life. But you can go to our YouTube channel and you can see story times with Mia. Or is it on Facebook? Do you know Vanessa or Emily? And me um, as a St. Bernard? I think there she is. Facebook. Yeah, I think Facebook. It's on Facebook, but we can get it on YouTube if it's more accessible for the kids. I'll talk to Elise about that. And Mia likes reading, huh? She yeah. likes listen to stories. <laughs> She's like a gentle giant. Yeah. So cute. I'm sure. She, how, how much does Mia weigh? Does anybody know? I'm sure I don't that know, they but... said it at some point. I'm sure that uh, it was shared, but she looks probably over 100 pounds. Wow. She's pretty big. Wow. Hi, Miss Valdora. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. <laughs> I think we're about ready to get started. So I'll stop sharing my screen. Good morning, everybody. So we have some some new faces. I don't know if um, everyone's met Miss Emily yet, but she's going to be joining us for a story time with Miss Vanessa again. Miss Vanessa had so much fun, and I know that we had fun with her, so... We invited her back to read us a story. And we also have Miss Blackburn with us. Or what do you prefer to be called? Is Miss Blackburn okay? Good. <laughs> and she will be presenting from AAA later about some safety that we can practice this summer. So we'll have some stories about safety and then we'll hand it over to Miss Blackburn. But we'll start off with our pride story time because it's pride month where we celebrate how everybody is who they are and we love everybody for who they are. So the first story we're gonna do is Jamie is Jamie. And this is a story that you can get off of Hoopla with your library card. Is it showing up okay? Okay. So here we have Jamie is Jamie, a book about being yourself and playing your way. Or Roya. Jamie had just moved to a new home and neighborhood. Is anyone else moving right now? Now that it's summer, some people might be moving. There was so much to do. Unpack boxes of toys and clothes and explore the yard outside. Most of all, Jamie was excited to start school and make new friends. At school the next day, Jamie joined the other kids in free play. That looks pretty fun. They've got some music and blocks and toys. A group of boys were racing cars on the floor. Jamie noticed that the back wheels had popped off of one of the cars. A boy named Joey was having trouble putting them back together. Can I help, asked Jamie. Are you strong enough, replied Joey. Jamie picked up the wheels, pushed them back into place, and vroomed the car 
back over to Joey. Wow, thanks, said Joey. Next, Jamie saw a girl looking in the mirror and posing. What are you doing, asked Jamie. I'm a ballerina, explained Alicia. I'm practicing ballet. Can I try? Wondered Jamie. Here we've got Kobos popping in. You have to wear a leotard, a frilly tutu, tights, and special dance shoes to do a pirouette like this. Can anyone here do a pirouette? What is a pirouette? There's a hint in the next picture. Jamie watched as Alicia twirled around. So a pirouette is turning around, but in a very beautiful ballerina way. Then Jamie did a perfect pirouette in pants and sneakers. Alicia was surprised. Jamie heard a baby doll crying and went to see what was wrong. Cynthia was having trouble. I can't get her to stop crying. Jamie held up the baby doll's head while she drank and gently patted her back until she burped. You did that just like my mommy, Cynthia said. Next, Jamie went over to a boy playing alone with action figures. Can I play, asked Jamie. Are you a boy? Only boys can play with action figures, replied Xavier. I'm Jamie, answered Jamie, picking up a superhero figure. We're being attacked by a giant purple harderbonger. Xavier grabbed two superhero figures and fought off the villain with Jamie. They look like they're having a lot of fun. They've got big smiles. For the rest of free play, Jamie told a pair of girls doing, uh, joined a pair of girls doing somersaults, told jokes to some kids until they fell on the floor laughing, finished a dinosaur puzzle with a couple of boys and played chef in the toy kitchen. Jamie's mommy was the first parent to arrive at pickup time. Leaving the classroom, Jamie waved goodbye to the other kids. Alicia said, Jamie's so graceful. She should be a ballerina one day. What? Jamie is a boy, replied Joey. He fixed my car so fast. He's going to be a mechanic. Cynthia said, Jamie is a great mommy. She knew just how to take care of my baby doll. Xavier was confused. Wait a minute, is Jamie a boy or a girl? I don't know, said Alicia, but I can't wait to play with Jamie tomorrow. That was a lot of fun. The next day during free play at school, Jamie decided to do some drawing. Nearby, Joey said, Cynthia, your baby looks cold. Let me help you put a sweater on her. Jamie watched as Joey and Cynthia took care of the baby doll together. Then Jamie noticed Alicia using the action figures to teach Xavier different ballet positions. They both made the action figures dance to fight the villain. Jamie, come play action figures with us, said Xavier. Sure, Jamie crouched down next to them and whispered, what's the plan? And Jamie was happy because everyone was playing exactly what they wanted to play the end and then the end of this book has some tips for teachers parents and caregivers about playing and talking to kids and how kids should be able to play whatever they want because we should be able to do what we like and then there's some more books so i hope you like that story and now I think Miss Emily has a story to introduce Miss Blackburn uh, and her topic of safety. Do we have Miss Emily? Miss Emily, are you with us? Or we can go to Miss Vanessa. I know Miss Vanessa has a, a book to read. I do. I'll uh, turn my camera on. Good morning, everyone. So I was thinking about doing a bike safety book since we ride a lot of bikes in Jersey City, right? We have all those nice bike lanes now that we can uh, use to ride our bikes safely. So hopefully um, 
you get out there and you ride a bike and we can get some tips on how to be safe while we're doing that. So I'm gonna share my screen and then begin. Okay, so this is called Safe on Your Bike, and it's by Rosemary Jennings. We ride bikes. How many people ride bikes? I, I, haven't, I haven't rode a bike in a long time. I'm kind of scared I forgot. But these lovely kids here are all riding bikes. And they look like they're having fun, right? Let's see what they're doing correctly to ride a bike. We are safe. What are they wearing on their heads? Helmets, right? Helmets keep our heads safe. There they go, wearing helmets. And what are on this young girl's knees? What are on her knees? You can put it in the chat knee pads, right? So knee pads keep our knees safe. So that way, if you fall off your bike onto your knees, you don't get all of those cuts and scrapes that I got when I was young because I didn't wear knee pads. So you want to keep your knees nice and scar free for when you get older. And then what should you hold when you're riding a bike? You can put it in the chat. Keep your hands on the handlebars, right? So Keep your hands on the handlebars, just like this young girl is doing here. She's holding them tightly. And what is this young one doing here? Where are her feet? Keep your feet on the pedals. So when you're riding a bike, if you sometimes wanna have fun and put your feet out, you can lose control of the bike. Or if you're riding by something, your foot can hit something and that'll make you fall too. So you gotta be careful. And then if you're riding in the city like us, yes, we have bike lanes, but you still always have to watch for cars because sometimes the bike lanes end and you have to bike across the street. So you have to watch for the cars, just like these kids are doing. And you see some of them are not wearing knee pads. So sometimes we don't wear knee pads, but they can get hurt if they fall on their knees. Stay out of the street unless you can get across. I know in the city, you can't always stay out of the street. So if you need to cross the street on a bike, make sure that you follow the, the stop signs, the lights, make sure that you can get across safely on your bike. We see people walking, we ring our bells. So if you have a bell on your bike, ding, 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 ring it. And that way people know that a bike is coming and they can move out of the way. So we don't hit anybody because yes, it's dangerous for us to be on a bike but it's also dangerous for other people if we hit them. It doesn't feel good to get hit by a bike. Look at these young kids on their bikes. We love our bikes. And in this story, we went over handlebars, helmets and pedals and Hopefully we'll be safe in all of these other places too. So this book was on Hoopla also. So I'm just gonna stop sharing my screen and I'll give it to Miss Emily if she's back with us. We have Miss Emily. I wonder if her internet stopped working. Yeah, she has some internet issues at Five Corners. I don't know why. Uh, sometimes our Wi-Fi is not that great. Oh. I just I bought a bike helmet for baby Stella. Oh, I bet that's so cute. One of those little, little tricycles that mommy pushes. Aww. I, don't, I don't even think it's called a tricycle. I don't know. It's like a low rider, but I got her a little, it says an infant helmet. Aww. So cute. Someone says their bike doesn't have a bell, but you can always say bike coming or just let people so they can hear it. Maybe we'll talk Ms. about Blackburn. that in my program too. Perfect. Oh, so awesome. yeah, we're actually going to learn a lot from Miss Blackburn. And if Miss Emily's not here, then maybe we can just jump right into our safety. Oh, someone's good said, to go. <laughs> All, <laughs> right. All right. All right. <laughs> Kobo likes to join us. Sounds good. Sounds good. <laughs> All right. Go. 
Good morning, friends. My name is Mrs. Blackburn, and the company that I come from, I work at AAA, and AAA likes to help kids learn how to be safe when you are out and about, and you might be near cars. Now, before I go any further, I did bring a friend to help me out, and I'm sure he's pretty excited to meet you, and I'm thinking maybe you want to eat him too, so come on over. What do you say? <gasps> oh, <laughs> Hi, <laughs> my name is Bob. Oh, you could wave and say hi to Bob. And uh, wait, wait, wait. what are we doing? This is so cool. We just heard some stories and, and what are we doing now? Well, Bob, at, at AAA, we like to talk to kids about being safe, like I said, when you have to be near uh, cars and stuff. Uh, I, don't think, I don't think we're supposed to go near cars. I mean, my mom says you could get like hurt by a car. I know. So we're going to learn how to do some of those things. Like sometimes we talk to kids about being safe when they're walking or, or when you're riding the school bus or riding in your car. But today we're going to talk about riding your bicycle. Oh, didn't we just hear that story from Miss Vanessa about, about bicycles? Yeah, I got a bicycle. Do you have a bicycle? Yeah, Bob, I can see from the chat bar that lots of kids have bicycles or maybe even scooters or skateboards or rollerblades anything that's on wheels. That's kind of what we're talking about, but we're gonna talk mostly about your bicycle. Well, I, I got a bike and I, I like to ride. It's so nice outside. It's, it's just good, really good fun. I know it is good fun and it's good exercise and it's great to get outside, but I wanna make sure that you know how to do it safely. So we gonna like learn how to ride a bicycle today? No, no, no. You have to learn how to ride your bicycle when you're at home and to practice your skills, but you gotta know what you gotta do first. Oh, well, uh, like what? Well, well, first you need to get your bicycle ready. Oh, my bicycle is ready. I mean, I could like take it out of the garage. I don't know, Bob, you gotta, you gotta check the ABCs on your bike. Are you telling me I have to like sing to my bicycle? A, B, C, D. No, 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 no. <laughs> You're not gonna sing to your bike. We're gonna talk about the ABCs. Like you have to check the tires to see if they have air air oh that starts with a doesn't it yes so we're going to check the air now bob when you check in the air and your tires well you just you just like look at them you could tell you can't tell just by looking bob you have to squeeze the tires and i want you to use both hands if you squeeze both hands just like this right across your tire and if you could squish it in you know what you might need to put a little air in there well how are you supposed to do that <gasps> Are you supposed to like put your mouth on that thing and like blow it up? Ew, disgusting. <laughs> you need a pump. And I'm going to recommend that your moms and dads help you the first couple of times. If you put the valve on the tire and you put it on your wiggle or bend it, you might actually let more air out of the tire. So let mom or dad attach the pump to the valve on the tire. You do the pumping part because that's the fun part. And then let the mom or dad take that off and then we squeeze it again. Just check, make sure you have enough air in your tires. Okay, so A is for air. What's, what's B stand for? Bob, Bob, B stands for Bob. <laughs> no, B does stand for Bob, but not on your bike. I'm talking about how you stop your bike. Can we see that in one of the pictures? We did, we're gonna stop our bike by using the brakes. Uh, I just put my feet on the ground. That's not a safe way to stop your bike, Bob. If you're going fast and you try to just put your feet on the ground, the pedals are going to keep spinning and you can actually get hurt. So I want you to think about your bike at home, boys and girls. Where are the brakes on your bike? They might be in the pedals. So younger kids' bikes, if you pedal backwards, boop, you're going to feel your bike stopping. Those are called coaster brakes. And that's a great way to learn. And I think I have that, but I think I got them on my handlebars too. Some of your bikes might have them on the handlebars too. And we practice squeezing. And in the book that Miss Vanessa showed us, there was a bike there that had handlebar brakes. But it's good to know where both of them are. And as you get bigger, our friends who are maybe in fourth or fifth grade, maybe you don't have the coaster brakes anymore. What? As you get big enough and your hands are strong enough to squeeze those brakes, they don't put them in the, in the pedals anymore. They're just up on the hand, 
handlebars. So we want to make sure that you know where your brakes are and you got to make sure they work. What are you going to do? You got to go down like a big hill? Mm -mm, do it right in the driveway. Push the bike a little bit, squeeze the brakes or sit on the seat, push the bike a little bit and pedal back and make sure that the brakes are working. So A stands for air, B stands for brakes. What about C? C stands for the chain. You have to make sure that the chain and all the cogs, everything that's in there is working, all right? And that's something that mom and dad can help you with too. But there's also an S, A, B, C's. S, what does that stand for? That stands for what you sit on. I sit on my bottom, doesn't that stand for B? <laughs> the seat, the seat, you have to make sure that your seat is a good height. Your feet should be able to touch the ground. You know, not, not with your knees really bent, but your feet should be able to touch. So when you do stop your bike, you can put your feet down and you can relax and rest and talk with your friends or your mom or dad, whoever you're riding your bike with. Mm, yeah, okay, so, so that's the ABC. It's air, brakes, chain, and seat. I noticed from that book that they talked about a bell on the bike too. I got a bell on my bike. Oh, great. I'm so excited. Having a bell or a horn is a great thing to have on your bike because it does tell you how you can let other people know that you're coming up from behind that. But we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later, Bob. It's great to have a horn or a bell or even to have a light on your bike. <gasps> oh, if you have a light on your bike, you could like ride your bike at night. How cool is that? <laughs> I don't want you to ride it at night. I want you to have a light on your bike so that cars from far away are gonna see you coming. Grown-ups who ride at night have to have them on there, but I don't even want grown-ups to ride at night. It's very hard for drivers to see you. And that is something that we have to talk about that sometimes drivers aren't really doing a good job paying attention. So we're gonna make sure that you have a light on your bike. Your bike has reflectors already on it. That helps cars see your bike from far away. All those things will help keep your bike nice and ready. Okay, so my bike is ready. What do I have to do now? The next thing is we have to get you ready. Oh, I'm ready already. I got my, I got my sneaks on. Oh, I'm, I'm glad you have your sneakers on, Bob, because that's important too. We do have to make sure that we're wearing the right clothes. Like, do you think that we should be wearing something like this on our bicycle? Oh yeah, well, in the summertime, that would be great. Mm -mm. I don't want you to wear flip-flops. You definitely need to wear something like a sneaker with laces that are tied. If you have laces, if you have Velcro, that's going to be velcro But you got to have a shoe or a sneaker, something that is not going to come off your foot. And Bob, yep, that's why I got mine on. And if your laces aren't tied, take it from me, because this happened once. My laces weren't tied, and then my lace got stuck in the chain. And then I fell off my bike, it was so bad. <laughs> yeah, we wanna make sure that your shoelaces are tied. All right, so starting from the bottom, we've got our shoes. The next I wanna talk about your, your clothes, like what kind of shirt are you wearing? Eh, I got my green AAA shirt on. Well, that's okay, but I want you to be even brighter. You know what I've got right here, Bob? I've got, what is that? Oh, this is a reflective vest. And you can see it's nice and bright. Oh, yes, it's really yellow. I know. Remember how I said like drivers might not be looking for us? Well, you got your bike ready by putting a light on it. And, and uh, but now I want you to be nice and bright. And you can get these any place where you buy a helmet or you get sneakers and stuff. They sell them for runners or even for people who are out walking their dogs. Something nice and bright lets cars see you from much further away. And that's a good safety thing. Oh. So they make those for kids? Sure, absolutely. Wearing something nice and bright is a good thing. Now, the last thing, I see some questions coming up and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna to get to all your questions. So let's keep going because the next thing I wanna talk about is what you have to wear on your head. I think it, I think it, you can wear like a baseball cap. I'm not talking about a baseball cap. Type right in there, what do you, what do you need to wear on your head when you're riding your bicycle? Yeah, I see everybody's writing that in there. You got to wear a helmet. No, I'm not wearing a helmet. What? Well, wearing a helmet squishes my hair down and it looks goofy. Bob, 
it's the law. Everybody has to wear a helmet. If you are younger than 17, and I'm pretty sure everybody here who's watching, it's the law. Hold on. Am I going to get like arrested and go to jail if I don't have a bike helmet on? No, no, no. You could get a ticket. And, that, and that's not the important thing. The important thing is your helmet is going to do a really good job protecting your head if you fall off your bike. But I am like a really good rider. I'm not going to fall off my bike. Bob, even really good riders, everybody should wear a helmet, grownups and kids. You might hit some gravel. You might hit a little pothole on the road. You might, you know, something expected, unexpected might happen. I want your head to be protected. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I, I have an experiment, Bob. I'm going to put you down for one second, all right, because I need two hands for this. Everybody who's watching, you can see that right here, I have an egg. Right, and, and we know what's inside the egg. Everybody's seen an egg. On the inside, it is, uh, what, what shape is it in there? Anybody know? Yeah, the, I see yolk, yep. The yolk is in there. And what color is the yolk? Is it green? Is it purple? No, it's yellow. You can't see it, but you know what's in there. It's yellow and it's round. And do you think that the inside is hard or is it mushy? It's pretty mushy, right? Yeah, it's mushy, but it is the most important part of the egg, the inside. Yeah, that's where all the protein and the nutrients are. Super important stuff. On the outside, what's protecting that yolk and keeping it in that round, perfect circle is the shell. And the shell is pretty hard. And you can see as I'm tapping it, nothing's happening to the egg because it's protected. But that shell is also fragile. That means it could break pretty easily. Like if I dropped it on the floor, it's probably gonna break, right? Yeah, yeah. Now, it's, it's definitely gonna do that. It's protecting the egg, but it is fragile. Now think about your head. Inside your head, there's something in there. <laughs> What's inside your head? Hmm. Yes, your brains are in there. Can you see them? No. Can you touch them? No, but you know they're there. And your brains are the most important part, kind of like the yolk inside the egg. It's your brains help you breathe and see and look and know what your name is. And really, your brain does everything for you. So every day while we're walking around, I'm going to tell you that your brains are pretty mushy, just like the inside of this egg. All right. And they're, they're in there. And even though we can't see them or touch them, we know that about our brains. So every day while we're walking around, there's something that protects your brain. What's up there? What's protecting my brain right now? Yes, your skull, very hard bone, yeah. And it's protecting our brain every day. But it's also fragile, kind of like this eggshell. If I fell off my bike or my scooter or my skateboard and my head hit the ground or I hit a car door or I hit something, my brain could get hurt. And I don't want that to happen. I want my brain to be you know, in really good shape. So we're gonna have to make sure that we wear something like this. And you're like, what is that? This is a piece of styrofoam. And styrofoam is a really super strong substance, but it's very light. If you bought a new telephone or you bought a new refrigerator or a new TV, it's gonna come wrapped in styrofoam. Very strong, but very light. And it's the same thing that's inside our helmets, styrofoam. And I'm gonna show you how strong this styrofoam is. I'm gonna take my egg, same egg that I have, I'm gonna put it right inside this little styrofoam helmet. I am gonna strap it in because just like a helmet, if you don't put the strap on, it's not gonna work, <laughs> all right? The helmet will just fall off and in this case, the egg would just fall right out. So I have my egg strapped into this little helmet and you know what I'm gonna do next? I'm going to drop it. Yeah, I'm going to drop it. So I want you to make a silent prediction to yourself. Three things could happen. One, I could drop it and this egg could totally break just like eggs normally break on the floor. Second choice, my egg might not break. And I, that's what I'm hoping is going to happen because it's wearing a helmet. And the third choice is it might actually even get a small little crack in it. Just like you could still get hurt wearing a regular helmet, but it won't be so bad. So hopefully you have your prediction made. 
Let's count to three and I'm going to drop it. One, two, three. All right, so I dropped it on the floor. Let's take a look and see. I'm gonna take it right out. Does it look like anything happened to the egg? No, the egg stayed totally intact. All right, so that's pretty cool, but I know some of you are very smart and saying, oh, Mrs. Blackburn, that's a fake egg. <laughs> I'm actually going to drop it again. Only this time, I'm not gonna put it in the helmet. I'm gonna drop it from the same height in the same spot and make another silent prediction. What do you think is gonna happen this time? Here we go. One, two, three, here we go. Oh, that did not, yeah, that did not sound good. <laughs> oh, take a look at that. Did my egg totally break this time? Yeah, so this does not look very good, does it? Now, I don't want this to happen to your brain and hopefully something like this will never happen to your brain. Injuries to your brain are very serious. And by just by wearing a helmet and wearing your helmet the right way can really help protect your brain from even a, you know, an easy fall or a hard fall. So I do have two helmets to show you, two different kinds. This kind is called an all sport helmet. It's a little rounder. It's got round holes in the top and a little more coverage around the back. This one is for kids eight to 10. Now I'm gonna tell you, I'm a little older than eight to 10, all right? Um, but it's kind of big on my head. So I might have to adjust it. And this helmet comes with special padding that a mom or dad could help put around the inside. But other kind of helmets have a little knob or a dial in the back or some kind of clamp. And I can take this and again, same size helmet. Right now it's too big, it's too wiggly. But all I have to do is take that knob. I turn it in the back and you can hear it ratcheting. Oh, now it's perfect. As I shake and move, it's staying on my head. So from here, we're going to do the two finger test. So the first part of this test, I'm gonna take two fingers and put them right across my eyebrow. That's how much space between here and my eyebrow there should be. All right, so you should do this with your helmet. If there's too much showing over here, this is not protecting my head. Right over here, this is good. The next two fingers, take those same two fingers, open them up like a V. And right here at the end, at the side, I, my straps over here should make a perfect V with the tip of the V right at my earlobe. And this one's good too, but you might have to adjust them. And sometimes you need a grown up's help to do that. So two fingers here, two fingers here. And finally, after you buckle at the bottom, you should have two fingers right under here. Any more than that, if it's too loose, then your helmet could move or come off if you hit the ground. And I want the helmet to stay right on your head. So we're wearing sneakers on our feet, something nice and bright and a helmet that fits two fingers, two fingers, two fingers. Super, I'm gonna take my helmet off and I'm gonna bring my friend Bob back. And, uh, uh, hi. <laughs> um, hmm. I see somebody wrote knee pads on there. You know what, knee pads are great. And when Miss Vanessa read her story, they talked about that. And particularly as you are a newer rider and you might fall off maybe more often, knee pads are great. Or after you've taken training wheels off and you're learning to ride without training wheels, knee pads are also a super idea. <sighs> so all this stuff to wear and to do, I know. But now you're ready, right? You've got to wear your helmet. We're making sure that we're wearing something bright, sneakers on our feet, our bike is ready. Finally, the last thing we need to talk about is some general rules of the road. Ooh, what do you mean by that? Well, the first rule is I want everybody to ride with a grown up. Well, what if my mom says I could go by myself? Well, it kind of depends between you and your parents. I'm going to say that if you are still on training wheels, you need to be with a grown up. If you are just learning how to ride without your training wheels, you need to be with a grown up. Maybe not till we're around fifth or sixth grade. Maybe we can go a little bit by ourselves. All right, that's between you and your grown up. The next rule is I want to talk about where you should ride your bike. Well, they, they were talking before, I heard them saying something about bike lanes. That sounds like a good idea. So I'm going to say bike lanes are super for grown up riders. 
But I'm actually going to say for kids, the bike lanes are usually on roads that are a little busier. I don't know the area around where all your bike lanes are, but you and your grown up need to decide, is this road too busy? If there is a bike lane, certainly we're going to stay in it. But the best place to ride is someplace where there's no cars. Where, where is there a place with no cars? You know, like a playground or a park. Oh, what about, what about the track by the high school? My mom likes to go there and walk. Yeah, you could probably do that. You need to just check with the local school and make sure that it's okay. And you have to make sure that there's no walkers in the way. So wait, oh, wait, 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 walkers. What about the sidewalk? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is the sidewalk okay? You know what? The sidewalk is okay. Kids are allowed to ride on the sidewalk, but you still have to remember there might be grown-ups who are walking and you have to carefully go around them. That's where that bell will come in handy, your horn or your bell. Uh, what are you supposed to do? Wait, you can't you just yell and say, hey, get out of the way. No, 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 Bob. You could ring your bell, toot your horn and politely say, coming up on your left. What, is, what do you mean by that? Well, drivers, when they drive a car, pass around on the left. You're on your bicycle. You have to follow the same rules that cars do. So if you're on the sidewalk or even on the road, you're going to pass around on the left and that person then will know they should move off to the right. That keeps us all nice and safe. Well, well, if somebody doesn't have a horn or a bell on their bike, then can you yell at them like, get out of the way, loser? <gasps> Bob, that's not even polite, right? Politely, coming up on your left. That's all you need to do. Say it nice and politely. All right, and then we pass. You can use the sidewalks. You can ride on the right side of the road. If you're on your way to the park or playground, you have to stay to the right. And again, as close to the side of the road as possible. And I think that I heard somebody say, maybe it was again, Miss Vanessa, who talked about obeying the traffic signals. But you mean like, if the, I come to a stop sign, I have to stop? Yeah, you're on a vehicle. So if there's a stop sign, you need to stop. It's probably gonna be at a corner. And that is a great place to cross the street. At the corner, not in the middle of the street. If there's a stop sign, we stop. And the best thing to do, oh, wait, I, I know this part because because everybody knows before you cross the street, you have to look left and right, right? You do have to look, but it's not just left and right. You're going to stop your bicycle. You're going to look to the right, look to the left, turn your whole head, right? Not just your eyeballs, turn over here. And then I want you to look around behind you. Behind you, what, I got to turn around? Yeah, look around behind you. Cars might be coming up behind you, getting ready to go through that same intersection. So we want to make sure we're looking left, right, left, behind you and far ahead and keep doing it while you're crossing. Oh, and, and I, I, should, I should ride as fast as I can across the street so I get there fast, right? Mm -mm. I want you to actually get off the bike and walk it. That's your safest bet because if you get a little nervous, if a car starts coming, they're going to see you better if you're going a little slower, if you're, if you, and you'll have better control of your bike. So we're gonna get off, we're gonna look, even listen for cars. Oh yeah, they make a lot of noise. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna look, listen, look ahead. And when your grown up tells you it's safe, that's when you're gonna go across. Same thing, if there's a traffic light, you obey the traffic signals. We know what the red light means and the green light and even the yellow light. If it's yellow, just wait till the light turns green. That's definitely the best thing. All right. Wow, there's like a lot of stuff. I know. There's tons of great information that's out there. But the key thing that we need to remember, cars might not be looking for you. So by making yourself bright, making your bike right, and following the rules of safety and trying to ride your bike where there's as few cars as possible, those are some things that can help keep you and your family nice and safe. Wow, well, that was pretty good. All right, now I can see, while Bob and I were, were chatting, I could see that there were some comments coming up on the, on the chat bar. And, um, oh, I see somebody's asking, can you wear a shirt with glitter on it? Of course, glitter is always, you know, a sparkly, fabulous thing, but um, it may reflect back a little bit. Are there any other questions about, yes, it does reflect a little bit, it does. 
Are there any other questions about bike safety um, that maybe I didn't see? Oh, what about arm signals? What a great question. Oh, like you can wave, right? No, 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 that's, that's not what I was talking about. I didn't really talk about hand signals too much because for younger riders, sometimes it's hard. But if we have older riders here, older riders could do this while you're actually moving. Younger riders can do this after we stop, but it is a good idea to communicate with drivers. When you drive a car, our drivers use turn signals to tell people if they're turning left or right, or even if they're stopping, the brake lights come on. Your bicycle doesn't have that, but you do have your hands. So if you wanted to make a left-hand turn, you're gonna hold out your left hand. Bob, hold out your left hand. Boop. Just like that. Oh, that sounds good. If you wanted to make a right-hand turn, oh, oh, then just put out your right hand, right? No, actually, if you're on the right side of the road and it's your right arm, the drivers might not see that arm. So you're gonna use your left arm and hold it up just like this. Oh, like I'm saying hi? Yeah, just like this, holding it up. If you held out your right arm out to the side, I think cars will get the idea that you're doing something and that's good. And if you're planning on stopping, then you just take your left arm and hold it down just like that. Again, that communicates to drivers you're getting ready to turn or to stop. And that's a good thing to communicate with them. That was a good question, whoever asked that about the hand signals. Uh, somebody just asked, can you jump off your bike? I'm gonna say no, not a good idea. <laughs> stop your bike, put your feet on the ground and then get off your bike safely. Jumping, not a, not a safe idea, <laughs> but it sounds like fun. Bob, this is about safe fun. <laughs> it's all about safety, right? If you yeah. don't have a bright colored shirt, what color should you wear? If you don't have a bright, say, say that question again. If you don't have a bright colored shirt, what color should you wear? Well, I'm going to tell you that this vest that I have, I keep it right with my bicycle so that if I happen to be wearing a, you know, a darker shirt or whatever, you can, you can get something like a reflective vest. Again, any place that, um, uh, any place that sells usually sneakers, uh, any place that sells bicycle supplies. It's, it's even pla places like um, PetSmart, like places where you buy supplies for your dogs. They sell them even for dogs. I do want you to be nice and bright. If you don't have a vest, shoot for something that's white or bright or neon. Uh, you know, shoot for something that's bright. It's not as critical during the daytime, but I want you to be nice and bright no matter what time of day it is. The brighter you are, the more likely it is that somebody's going to see you from further away. We're getting a lot of questions about those pegs that people put in in the back tire so that someone else can stand up. Can you address that? Yes, I can. All right, I'm going to tell you, wait, wait, I don't, I don't know what that is. Well, Bob, some kids have attached what they call pegs and it attaches to the back tire so that you could carry another passenger behind you and that person would stand on the bike standing behind the person who's who's actually riding the bike that sounds like fun bob totally not fun not safe a bicycle that's meant for one person should only carry one person all right this way that person can have their hands on the handlebars and can manage the balance of the bike safely we don't want to carry other passengers on the back on those pegs if you have them take them off or just don't carry another person. I know that sounds, uh, you know, I, it's all about safety, right? <laughs> have that person have their bike. You can ride your bikes together, riding together. Again, someplace where there are no cars, then you can ride side by side. Uh, an empty parking lot where there's no school, that, that might be a great place to ride your bike. Yeah, yeah. Uh, any other questions that I did not see? I think, I think I'm covering. Yeah, I see some people are saying that they, you know, that they got some some cuts or boo boos on their knees. I will share this, Bob. You mentioned that, um, you know, if you're on your training wheels and you're trying to figure out how to get off those training wheels, I can tell you that a super easy way to do this. Oh my, my mom used to like run after me and like hold on to the seat, and she'd be like, "Oh, my back is killing me." even easier. Have mom and dad Google how to get the pedals off. It's very easy. If you take the pedals off and lower the seat down just a little bit, 
you can actually scoot along and practice balancing and gliding. And once you get that balance and glide thing and both your feet are able to touch the ground, raise the seat up a little bit more and then put the pedals back on. It's pretty easy to do. Kids should not attempt that themselves. Moms or dads have to do that for you, but your mom and dad will have a much better time with their back. Now I am seeing some other questions why we have to wear a helmet. I remember I said, it's the law and I want your head to be protected. All right, somebody said, what about those baskets that you can attach to the front? Baskets are great. You could carry a Frisbee or something if you were going to a playground. Baskets are great as long as they don't interfere with how you are able to steer the handlebars or if they don't hit your knees. If they hit your knees, then you probably need uh, your seat up a little bit higher uh, or lower. You know, it might, might be a seat issue. All right. Um, what do we have? I see I don't some know if air in my tires. How do we put air in the tires? Well, we may need to get a pump. Well, I, I thought maybe you had to put your mouth on the tire and, and pump, blow it up yourself, but I, I learned that that was not the right way to do that. Mm -mm. Mom or dad needs to take the air pump and it's got a little valve. You attach that to the tire. You do the pumping and then let mom or dad take that off. Once you learn how to do it without bending the stem that's on your tire, then, that, then you can probably do it yourself, but have a grown up help you. If you don't have a pump, oh, if you don't have a pump, what are you supposed to do then? I can tell you that you can go with a grown up, grown up <laughs> to a gas station and they have pumps there that they use to pump up car tires. It'll take literally a second to do your, your bicycle tire. You can do that, but again, it has to be with a grown up. It's easier to probably, if you're gonna ride your bike a lot, it's probably easier to pick up an inexpensive pump from Target or Walmart or whatever um, store. They're, they're not very expensive. That, that would be a good thing to have or see if your neighbor has one. Good idea. Anything else? Anything else? All right. Uh, what if I don't pump my tires? If you don't pump the tires, if you don't put air in the tires, then you, you're going to um, damage your bike and you're not gonna be able to ride it safely. They definitely need to be pretty firm. They definitely need to be pretty firm. You did a fantastic job teaching us about safety, not only bike safety, but basically anytime you're on wheels, motorized or not motorized, I guess that's the right word, uh, yep. you need to have a helmet on to protect your brain. If not, your brain could look like the egg. Yeah, <laughs> which is why and we don't I want that, right? <laughs> Yeah, my husband's like, you don't need a helmet. She's a little, and I know you need a helmet. That Those are wheels. She needs a little helmet. You know what I like about that too? I don't know how old your baby is. 17 months. 17 months. She's already getting in the habit of knowing anytime she's going on any kind of thing with wheels, she's already learning the helmet is an important part of her equipment that she needs to have. You have to get shoulder, uh, elbow pad, shoulder pad, elbow pads, and knee pads. Yeah, all that yep. stuff. <laughs> when you're ready to ride, though, I'm telling you the trick about taking the pedals off is definitely the key to saving your back when you're trying to learn how to get off those training wheels. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to remember. Ms. Okay. Kate, remind me if I forget. Yep. You got a ways to go, but. <laughs> yes, yes. yes. Thank All you right. so much. This was Thanks amazing. Thanks so much. Yes, thank you so much. And thank you, Bob. I think everyone loved Bob so much. Yes. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we had so much Bob. fun. Yeah. Thank you, Bob. Thank you I so much. I see Emily is back. I was going to say now, Miss Emily, she did have some internet problems, but she's going to read the story now if people still want to hear our story. <laughs> and we'll Hi, see everyone. She talks about some of the things we just learned. Yay, great. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Miss Blackburn. Thank you, Bob. Great, so we learned all about bike safety. Can anyone write in the chat another way to get from place to place? So we have bikes, what else? What's another way to get somewhere? I see cars, scooters, train, walking, helicopters, ooh, fun. Okay, so we have in Jersey City, we have the PATH train, right? Yay, ooh, airplane private jets, fancy. Um, in Jersey City, we have the PATH train. Has anyone ridden on the PATH train before? Raise your hand. Yeah, good. Um, yeah, so the PATH train, it takes us around Jersey City and it can go to New York. So it's a type of subway. So what I have is a book about subways. 
share my screen. All right, can we see? Okay, yes. so this is Subway Ride by Heather Lynn Miller and illustrated by Sue Rama. So we're gonna go on a journey around the world in a subway. It has beautiful illustrations. Down, down, down. The subway is underground, right? Step down below to see the world. Now off we go. Now, where do you think all of these kids are gonna go? Uh, write your guesses in the chat. We find out at the end of the story. We pay our fare. We turn the gate. to the platform. So we swipe in our cards, right? Does anyone know what a, the fare costs in Jersey City to ride the path? Underground, we wait, wait, wait. Saxophone blast, jazzy vibes, dancing. Has anyone heard subway music before? Drums and cymbals, jam and jive. Ooh, we're in London. Rumbling, roaring, blurring speed. Silver bullet, rushing breeze. Whoosh. We step on quickly, move aside. Up we're in New York City. Door slide, shut our turn to ride. Busy folks step on and off. We stay put, our trip is long. Door slide open, we slide back. Subway whizzes down the track. We bump and sway, we hold on tight. We zip through tunnels, dark as night. Here we go. Does anyone have any final guesses where they're gonna end up? Maybe a library? <laughs> Clomping and stomping, shuffling feet, step to the clacking subway beat. Last stop, we hear the driver shout. Doors open wide, we step out. Step up, up, up from the dark. Here we go. A park, a celebration in the park. Yay, so they arrived. And this book has some fun facts about subways. I noticed here in New York City, there are over 468 stations. So it's the biggest subway station, subway station in the whole wide world. All right, thanks for reading with me. Okay. Emily. Thanks, everyone. And thank you for coming to Fun Fridays. <laughs> I'm going to pass it back to Miss Kate. All right. Well, I think that's it for today. So we're so happy that we had Miss Blackburn and Bob join us. That was so much fun and so informative. So make sure that you get some helmets, some reflective vests, be safe. <laughs> Aw, Ilana, I missed you guys too. I'm so glad. Aw, Diana says she loved today's fun Friday. <laughs> They're asking for the information song. I mean, we can do that. That's easy. I can pull that up and we can sing it while we go. Um, while Miss Kate is pulling up the song, make sure you join us next Friday. We have another fun event. We're going to learn about safety, pedestrian safety around trains and the light rails. And then the following Friday, we have water safety to keep you safe all summer. Yes, Ms. Blackburn, thank you so much. You were amazing.
and everyone loved Bob. He looks like our math on the spot puppet that we have at school. <laughs> this was great. I really enjoyed myself. This this was um, I've been doing virtual programs for a while, but this was definitely a different and unique way to reach so many friends. This was great. Amazing. Don't worry, we'll have you come back next year for multiple. I'm more than happy to. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. And now, by popular demand, the information song. I hope everyone's been practicing safety online as well as safety on bikes. Let's see, can everyone hear it? information song if i sing this song i'll never go wrong my information belongs to me and helps my doctor and my family strangers don't need to know to what house or school i go do i ever use my real name online no i can use a fake name just fine. Do I ever tell people where I live? No. I say I'm from Jersey. That's enough to give. Do I ever share my age or birthday? No. There's nothing more about that to say. Do I ever give the number to my phone? No. I never give it to someone unknown. What about my favorite food? Yeah. That's not personal, so use it. Do. This is my information song. If I sing this song, I'll never go wrong. I want to play a game online. I ask a grown-up if it's fine. Once they say it's okay, I create an account to play. Is this a good username? No, I don't ever use my real first name. Is this a good username? No, it's not my house or school, that's just the same. Is this a good username? Sure. A hobby is a good username. Remember that personal information isn't always words in print. It could be pictures you post that give a helpful hint. So be careful of the words and photos that you share because you never know who's watching from their chair. This is my information song. If I sing this song, I'll never go wrong. Now I play my favorite game online. A friend request comes in this time. It isn't someone that I recognize. So I'll say no and be very wise. Do I ever use my real name online? No. I can use a fake name. That's just fine. Do I ever tell people where I live? No. I say I'm from Jersey. That's enough to give. Do I ever share my age or birthday? No. But there's nothing more about that to say. Do I ever give the number to my phone? No. I never give it to someone I know. What about my favorite food? Yeah, sure. That's not hers and also gives it to Information song. If I sing this song, I'll never go wrong. I'm glad that everyone likes My that song. Belongs. I love it too. And it's on YouTube, so you can find it whenever you want and sing it with your friends. We heard some stories of some dance parties. Hello, with... everybody. I'm <laughs> Shane Smith from oh. the Jersey City Free Public Library. Well, <laughs> Got to pause the video. 
I just wanted to say, um, and Miss Emily and I are from Five Corners. So if anybody ever wants to come visit Five Corners and pick up books, you'll be able to see us in person. So. The library is open for children. Yeah, we, we do um, browsing in the mornings and up until one when the public comes in. I know like everything is changing constantly. It's kind of fluid. So they tell us, don't say anything completely yet. Like, yes, it's completely open, but if the kids are able to browse in the morning with their parents, they can come in and we do let them browse books and we could talk to them. We could give you book recommendations and we can let you know what's going on. We're gonna have a lot of fun outdoor activities in the summer. We're still working on that. Five Corners is gonna have um, some in the parking lot because we have a space there. So you can see Miss Emily and I in the parking lot. We'll uh, have some entertainment for you guys. We're gonna do a book program where we're gonna share all of the new books that we've been ordering for you. We've been ordering a lot of new books um, about safety, about all different types of subjects. So we would love to meet you all in person. And if you are going to be attending like the summer camps around the parks in Jersey City, we're supposed to be doing something with them too. So you'll be able to see all three of us in person. I'm jealous I don't get to uh, participate in Five Corners activities. <laughs> you no, can pop people. on over. Yeah. They have a, they've got a parking lot. Sounds great. It's a big draw. Yes. In the city. <laughs> All right, everyone. Well, it's almost 11 o'clock. I know that some people have some math class or lunchtime. But again, we're so happy that you could join us. We're so happy that Ms. Blackburn and Bob could join us. Yes, we'll see everyone next Friday. Have a fantastic weekend. Stay safe, wear your helmet, wear your bright colored clothes, check your tire pressure, your seat, make sure everything's good to go. Stay next to mommy. Yep, yep. I have to, you know, <laughs> that's the first thing I'm gonna do now, right? <laughs> Uh, Lisa wants to see Ms. Blackburn and Bob next week, but unfortunately we have another present, well not unfortunately, but we will have a different presenter, so it will be sad we won't see Bob and Ms. Blackburn though. I'll be happy to come back another time, but I know you have a pretty busy schedule. Sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll, um, we'll look forward to seeing you next year. Exactly. Next school year. Bye everyone. Bye everyone. All right, I'm going to end it now. <laughs> Bye. 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 Happy Friday.